The Toy Story 2 game is one of the most nostalgic games to players out there. People love this game, but what if it got a remake? That's the question I set out to answer one and a half years ago today, where I turned Buzz Lightyear to the rescue from this to this. Toy Story is about to turn 30 years old. The original movie was just re-released in theaters a few weeks ago and Toy Story 5 is nearly here. But over the last 15 years, Toy Story games have been neglected. From Toy Story Racer to Toy Story 3, these games deserve to be the best versions of themselves possible. And there's only one man for the job. Graduate of Starfleet Academy, the greatest space ranger to ever join Star Command. This is Buzz Lightyear to the rescue, bringing you Toy Story 2 Reassembled. Since my last update, we have made significant progress to both level 2 and level 3, with both mechanics and art. My first update was actually with the cosmetic system. When Buzz is in glow-in-the-dark mode, his chest shines the correct color. However, I also have a light component on him that stays a static green, so I updated the cosmetic system to track a color variable, and I just update the light color when a new cosmetic is selected. I have also started adding more cosmetic items. I will say that due to technical limitations with the model we're using, it isn't really viable for us to create new outfits for Buzz. However, we can still create new attachments. I've added a Zerg helmet that Buzz can wear, as well as being able to wear his booster boots at all times. But we'll get back to these booster boots soon. I know this cosmetic system update was only one paragraph, but this was actually quite a big update behind the scenes, but just nothing super interesting to say about it beyond that. I've talked about the race manager before, but essentially this system uses these checkpoints to determine which racer passes which checkpoints to determine who is actually doing the race properly and who is winning. All that is simple enough, but the really tricky part is RC's AI. I have a spline that I use to tell RC where to go, so it's as simple as telling RC to follow this path, and it works perfectly. <laughs> oh man, this is so bad. You know what I could use? Help from this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in science, data analysis, AI, mathematics, and programming. That's a great opportunity for anyone interested in game development. With the Brilliant app that makes it really easy to learn with fun, hands-on lessons, I've been going through the programming courses to build timeless problem-solving skills, not memorization. Meaning while I'm elevating my knowledge, intuition, and skills as a programmer, which I need a lot of help with, I've also become a better problem solver. I really like that I can take it anywhere while on the go with my busy life, regardless of whether I am diving into a new topic or just doing some practice lessons. To learn for free with Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash level redesign, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off with the annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. I then started work on the broken down car in the messy yard of level two. This is actually a pretty involved model since it is lowered by jacks by ground pounding buttons on the ground. And it also has a trunk that is a ground pound launcher. I have a launcher system already, so that was simple as dragging it in, determining where it should launch buzz and attaching it to the car. This shows the power of having reusable systems in your project, which is why I was able to create about 60% of level two in just a few hours during a live stream which is only possible with this type of workflow. I'm gonna give a demo of how this car works. Essentially, if you ground pound these buttons, it lowers this jack and it lowers this jack. You can see that the car currently is resting on the two cinder blocks on the passenger side. And then the two jacks, now one since I ground pounded the one button, are holding up this side of the car. But if you ground pound it, whoops, you can see the car lowers and now you can get on top of it. We have also added the trunk here and it has a little marking on the back to show where you can ground pound. As you ground pound it, the trunk actually opens and smoothly closes. Now the way the system works is we have these car jack buttons and then as you ground pound it, it has our event system on there where if you ground pound on it, it actually lowers the piston. Then it sends a notification that the jack has been activated. This notification will be picked up by the broken car manager, but we'll get to that in a minute. Then it runs a timeline, which is basically a quick, easy way to adjust the position of the buttons to lower it and raise it. Now, once we actually lower the piston on the jack, it runs another timeline that lowers the position of the jack itself. That's pretty simple to do. And finally, we have the broken car manager, which is on the actual broken car. 
This jack activated event is called by those buttons. It's listening for when those buttons are pressed. If we go through the list and all the jack buttons that we are looking for have been activated, then we call this event called all jacks activated. What this does is it runs a timeline to adjust both the rotation and location of the car. Let me explain why it has to be both. The pivot position right now is on the bottom and you can see right now the passenger side is sitting on the, the blocks. If we lower it to where it needs to, you can see that this side rises up. So we have to adjust the rotation and the position so that it can look like it actually sits on the center blocks correctly. It's not very hard to do, uh, but it is something that we have to account for as you can see here and here. We also have this event for the trunk being activated. It is listening for the launcher that's attached to it. And when this launcher gets activated, it goes through here and we run our timeline to again, adjust the rotation of the trunk being opened and then closing back. And that's how we made this system. It's super simple and easy. Just a little bit of 3D math, but nothing too complicated at all. Now let's add some rocket boots to the level. I did already have a power-up mechanic, so I just have to update the mesh to the actual pickup and set it to use the Enum rocket boots. Once the boots are collected, a rocket boost mesh appears under Buzz. It's attached to his foot bone, which means that it stays attached to his foot no matter what animation he plays. I then put Buzz into his edge detection backwards animation state. So the boot appears on the one foot on the ground. Then I set Buzz's forward velocity to a new booster boot speed variable. So Buzz can no longer move back and forth at free will. And he turns by moving the camera the direction the player wants Buzz to move. Now that I have this movement working, I then found a sci-fi booster particle effect pack. There are a lot of great booster effects here, but I settled on this one for now. But let me know if you think one of these other ones would actually look better. Next, I began working on the bosses for level two and three. But before we get there, let's take a look at all of the new art. Okay, here we are in level two to look at some new art. And you'll notice the first piece of new art is the lawnmower. It doesn't really turn real smooth, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Um, and we even also have a particle effect of some grass that's shooting out of it as well. I definitely love how the lawnmower looks, but I do want to refine its movement a bit. It is a bit crazy. I also want to point out the new exterior environment. You can see it down from here and you get a little glimpse of, of like the large buildings as well as some uh, standard houses. Uh, we'll get a better glimpse of that in a moment. But first, let's go to the messy yard because there's a lot of new art here. Uh, first off, we have a clothesline that works with the wind effect system. So you can see the clothes are blowing in the wind. And then we also have this washing machine that definitely looks a bit rusted. Uh-oh. We have the broken down car, which is very rusted, but definitely love the style of it. And now that we're on top of the car, we can actually come back here and you can see the trunk that does open and we have a little spot to tell you where to ground pound. Now we're gonna make our way over to the washing machine. I love the interior of this, it's so cool. You see the light bleeding through these little holes. It looks really nice. But the actual washing machine is a bit dirty and I love the way this looks. Uh oh. We did update the cement puddles. They were moving like water and I made it to where it doesn't move unless you're actually in it and you're pushing it. Uh, but when you're not in it, it does not actually move at all. And here's the rocket boots model. They're much larger here than normal. Also, it is a quite a bright light. It's probably a little bit too bright. And before we climb to the top of the tree to look at the whole town, I do want to show what it looks like from here because this already gives you quite a big idea of what the level looks like. So you can see we have our play area here and the other outside areas have tall grass and some houses. It definitely looks pretty fleshed out and, and a lot to the environment. Now let's go to the top of the tree and show you what the whole environment looks like. First off, we do have the kite, but I did not finish him before <laughs> this video. So uh, yeah, but you can see he looks pretty cool. I don't remember how much health he has. There we go. And uh, his body pieces don't fall properly. I didn't turn physics on them, but these are his pieces. Whenever he blows up, he turns into pieces and there you go. And here we go. Here's the entire environment. And you can tell that there's quite a bit going on. There's definitely several blocks worth of buildings, uh, then medium sized buildings, then a large city surrounding the entire environment. Uh, we actually probably need to raise the clouds because those volumetric clouds are going through the buildings. <laughs> I just now realized that. 
And if we exit play mode and look at the level like this, you can see what it looks like. So this is quite an interesting look. You can see we have about three blocks worth of buildings and then the outer city surrounding everything else. And yes, you can see here that the clouds are going through the buildings. So uh, yeah, those need rays probably. Now, while we wanted to make it look like there's grass everywhere, we did have to be a little cautious for performance reasons. So we have tons of foliage in outside areas, but you can see it's kind of splashed out and all the pieces are larger so that we can have less to fill out more space. And we fill out about a block's worth of stuff and then the rest you can barely see. And so we kind of count that as acceptable. And even some of this is actually really hard to see unless you're at the very top of, whoops, unless you're at the very top of the tree, uh, but it is still possible. Kyle did also make these houses, although they are actually pretty simple uh, shape-wise and everything, but they do have an interior. And we basically reuse the curtains from level one and then uh, just some empty rooms. So it'd be cool to throw some furniture in here, but um, not gonna worry about that right now. Plus you can barely see them. Oh, hello grass. But you can see there's actually uh, three different versions of these houses or two different versions. There's these two along with Andy's house. And then there's this one with uh, the patio. Kyle did combine these two houses to make this shape. Though you can barely see it, but it does still add a bit more to the environment, especially whenever you're looking from up here. Now, if you're wondering, besides these houses, all the others actually came from an asset pack from the Unreal Engine store, which Kyle retextured. So we used the base models that were really low poly and were retextured. The, the environment does have a lot of stuff, including some basic cars, some trash, light poles, stop signs, things like that. We have also added this environment to level one as well, though a lot of this you can actually can actually be deleted because you can barely see a lot of it because there's only uh, how many windows are on this house? Five. This is the only window you can kind of see on the left and you can see the closest you can get is about here. Oh, I need to change that one more still. You can barely see the outskirts of the city, so uh, we can delete like most of the buildings here. But from Andy's room this is what it looks like. We did lower the opacity of these windows. So you can see I'm a little better. See the grass out there. You can see some other houses, some cars. Here's the front yard view from the living room. You can tell everything looks huge. Um, yeah, I mean, the scale isn't 100%, but that's fine. It looks good. And then here is from the attic. You can see nice little view. And I love the city skyline here. It looks so good. I do want to take a close look at some models. We don't usually do it like this, but this model's kind of hard to see in the game. So here is the plane. We do have a propeller. That's actually a separate object that goes on and it spins, but uh, you can see this is a really nice toy material. I still love how it looks. The gun is slightly off center, which I actually really like, but there's the biplane and then there's his bomb, which is designed a lot like him. And this thing is awesome. I think Kyle actually made a model for his portfolio before of a bomb like this. That was a fallout. Uh, inspired bomb and he reused that mesh and then retextured it for this and I love how this looks it looks so nice but you can barely see this as well I actually increased the scale of this object in the scene just so you can see it better as it's flying out and finally here's a look at level three which is very similar to level two except we can remove some assets and it doesn't need as much foliage because most of the foliage you can only see if you look through the fence panels which you can barely see through anyways but this actually takes place about 20 minutes after level two, according to the time of the sun and stuff. I think that makes it really neat. It's much darker and more purple. And uh, I also added a bit more clouds since the storm is starting to roll in because in level five, it storms a lot. I finished making all missions for level two and three at the same time as the bosses, which with the narrative tales plugin is super easy. I basically just have this simple tree here where the first task is to defeat the level three boss bombs away. Once he is defeated, I tell Narrative that I completed the defeat boss task with his special argument BA underscore boss. The first two letters representing the level name and the word pointing to the specific mission type. This moves the mission to the next task, which is to collect the token. I know level three doesn't actually technically have a token in the original game, but I put a token here for now to see if I prefer to have it or not. For the actual bombs away behavior, I recognize that movement of all of my AI is the worst part of this remake. AI isn't really what I specialize in, but instead I'm really good at making large complex systems. But I decided to try a new approach with this boss. Instead, I move him with the movement node here, which takes a direction. This is usually with the thumbstick of a player. This player movement component on the enemy allows for easy customization of movement behavior. So I set the biplane to be in the flying state, 
set his rotation speed to pretty low, and his forward velocity to be at a set speed that is about double the player's max speed. Then his target location is to get close enough to Buzz to start attacking, and when he gets too close, he then goes to a flea state where he flies off in the distance to turn around. Now let's talk about his attacks. His main attack is a machine gun. These bullets are invisible lines called raycast that I shoot down at a set angle from the plane. And these raycasts tell me if they collide with anything. If they hit buzz, it causes damage. I then added a particle effect that spawns at the point of collision on the ground so the player can see where these bullets are hitting. Now these impact particles don't really work super well here, so I'm gonna see if I have a better effect to use. Then I wanted to give the biplane boss a bomb attack. Since the level is called Bombs Away, I took Kyle's bomb model and gave the boss a local position to spawn the bombs from. Then I apply a random directional force to throw the bomb out of the plane. I then added another ray cast, which again is an invisible line to check collision. And when that very short ray cast hits the ground, it explodes with the particle effect here. I then generate radial damage inside of the explosive area, which can hurt Buzz. Next, I decided that I wanted to scale his difficulty a bit so when he has full health, he only throws a bomb every four seconds. But as his remaining health drops, he throws more and more bombs until he is throwing a bomb every 1.2 seconds right before he dies. This causes the end of the fight to be pretty chaotic, but a lot of fun. I will also say that it isn't as hard as it looks, which can actually help the player feel a lot more tension and reward when they do beat him. By the way, I also messed up his spawn rate here at one point where uh, he was throwing bombs every frame. This is awesome. Now we did run into a major issue over the past week, which is really unfortunate timing because I was working to try and get this video done. But basically the frame times for all the end game physics started going very slow. For example, watch me jump on the seesaw from two weeks ago. And here is what it looks like now. It drops down to three frames a second. That's ridiculous. I think I accidentally added some very bad code to the project when I added in his booster boots, but I don't know for sure, so uh, oops. I did upgrade the project to Unreal Engine 5.6 from 5.3, and this actually gave performance a pretty good boost, even with some bad physics-based code in the project. Later versions of UE5 are making performance improvements to Lumina Nanite, we don't use Nanite for the project since we have a mid-poly art style, but we do use Lumen for lighting. And there you go, cadets. I hope you learned a lot and that it wasn't just years of academy training wasted. <laughs> Thank y'all to my Patreon members and YouTube members. I really appreciate the support. It's really generous of y'all. Thank you so much for watching and y'all take care now. <laughs> and let's get this off because this is so hot. Oh my God. <laughs>